Good morning and welcome to Clayland Baptist Church. How's everybody doing this morning? It is good to see you in our worship service this morning. Uh, Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. I tell you what, let's stand and go to the Lord of Prayer and then remain standing as we pledge our flags to the front. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for the day that you've given to us. What an awesome day to be in your house and to be in your service. Father, we thank you so much for the blessings of the past week. Father, we look forward to this coming week in Vacation Bible School and just excited to see what it is that you're going to do uh, through our instructors and and, uh, going toward these students. Father, we pray that you be in the center of everything that is said and done. Lord, not only today, but Lord, through Vacation Bible School and and, uh, in our lives as uh, uh, we are living out in the world. God, we thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brother Owen. Good morning. Good morning. Let us recognize our flags to the front. First to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood united in all Christians, in service, and in love. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our call to worship hymn this morning is found on page two, if you're following along in the hymn on there. Holy, holy, holy. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And happy Father's Day to all our dads out there. It is good to have you in our worship service. And if you have your bulletin, just a few announcements I share with you. This will be the last Sunday to give to the Mother's Day offering. I know that was last month, but we run it for uh, from Mother's Day to Father's Day. And uh, to give to the uh, Florida Baptist Children's Home, if you'd like to donate to that, uh, use offering envelopes in the pew ahead of you. And uh, mark on their FBCH or Children's Home or some way that we'll know uh, where that special offering is going. Uh, another announcement to uh, share with you is that I have uh, walking through the Gospels on Monday nights, uh, except for uh, Kalinda this 
tomorrow night you're not going to have it. Uh, typically, it's on Monday nights, 5.30 down in the adult three, but uh, this week we've got Vacation Bible School. Can we say amen, amen. to that? And uh, so we're looking forward to that this week. And uh, VBS will run from Monday, tomorrow through the 21st from 6 to 9 each night. And uh, dinner will be served at 5. And then uh, next Sunday, uh, June 23rd, is going to be our family night, that, that Sunday night. And that will be at 5.30 and everything will take place down in the rec center. And uh, we are looking forward to a great week of Vacation Bible School. I uh, got a chance to ask Miss Valerie this morning if they were ready for it. She said, absolutely. If you look around the church a little bit, you'll see all the decorations that are up. I know that they have been working very hard on this. So please, if you're not involved in VBS this year, at least you can do is pray for them. Amen. For those that will be working. And uh, I'll tell you what, you'll be able to tell those who have worked in VBS by next Sunday. It'll be those that are going, oh, man. And uh, we're going to be wore out. It, it's, it's a long week, but let me tell you what, it's worth it. Amen. Amen. It's worth it. So be in prayer for our VBS that's coming up again Monday through Friday with uh, Family Night being on Sunday. Uh, then Sunday after that, June 30th, is also going to be some big days around here. Um, it's going to be a, it's our fifth Sunday. We'll have regular services that morning. And then uh, that Sunday night, fifth Sunday, uh, be our fifth Sunday singing, Brother Bob Gentry and his group, the parking lot pickers. They're going to be here. And uh, it's also uh, the end of the quarter. And uh, we normally have a birthday celebration at the end of each quarter. So those that have had a birthday for uh, April, May, and June will be celebrating that. So we're going to have fifth Sunday sing, and we're going to have birthday celebration. And since how we're only going to be about four or five days away from 4th of July, we're going to go ahead and throw that celebration in there as well. So uh, we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and what have you. And, and uh, Brother Tim, we found any peanuts yet? Not yet. Not yet. Brother Tim's going to go find a field somewhere and dig us up some peanuts. And I don't know how many. We, uh, Brother Tim's working on finding us some peanuts. We had boiled peanuts that night, and and uh, it even says homemade ice cream. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> it's going to be a good day. Mark it on your calendar. June 30th begins at 5:30 again. Everything will take place down at the rec center. All right. Any other announcements we need to make? Yes. Sir. yes. During VBS, VBS, okay. <clears throat> During Vacation Bible School, we will have an adult class, okay. Uh, there is one more that I, I left out, and this is upcoming. Uh, this is in August. It'll begin August 18th. We will have regular services that Sunday morning and Sunday night. And then uh, at, at, uh, at 11 o'clock, morning worship, 530 evening worship. And then Monday through Wednesday, uh, uh, it'll be uh, 6.30 each night. And uh, that'll be our upcoming revival. Again, that is August 18th uh, through the 21st. <coughs> and uh, Brother Eddie Blaylock will be our evangelist for that week. Now, I know that many of you know Brother Eddie, and he has been in our neighborhood for as long as I can remember. Uh, I met Brother Eddie when I was a uh, youth pastor and he was pastor of First Baptist Church in Brantford, and that had to be in the 80s or 90s. So Brother Eddie is not a stranger to this area or this community, and uh, so we are looking forward to him being here again. That is August 18th through the 21st. All right, any other announcements we need to make this morning? Brother Tim, tell us about Sunday school. Be glad to. First, before I, I give the... Um, uh, Count of the numbers and everything. I'm glad to say that Margie. I'm glad to see Aunt Margie Amen. back with us uh, doing the secretarial duties that she's been doing for years. Amen. So uh, Sunday school report. We had 43 this morning Sunday school with seven seven visitors, and Eustace and Sam had the banner class. Amen. Good, Good job. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, I do want to take just a moment and uh, introduce a, uh, a newlywed couple to us. Now, most of you already know them, and uh, that is uh, Brother Chuck and Sister Michelle. Uh, they uh, they got married uh, two Fridays ago, isn't it? 
and I've been on a road trip already, and they're still married, so God is good, <laughs> amen? Atlanta, going through Atlanta, I heard, was a little tough. It was a little trying, but y'all made it. May God bless y'all in all that y'all do. Thank you so much. Father's Day, what an awesome day, amen? amen. And as we... Uh, as, as is our tradition here at Clay Lamb, we like to recognize the oldest father, the youngest father, and the father with the most, and we're going to say with the most family present this morning. So let's, uh, let's do the oldest father first. Do we have any fathers? Um, I know this is crazy. Let's start at 80. If, you're 80. if you're a dad here this morning and you're over 80, raise your hand. Jimmy. Gene? Gene over 80? Now, Gene, do we need to pull a driver's license? <laughs> you ain't going to? Okay. Jimmy, how old are you, bro? You're 80. All right. 80 years of age. Can anybody beat that? Anybody willing to admit that they can beat that? Jane, how old are you? 82. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> All right. Anybody beat 82? Anybody beat 82? Gene, oldest dad here this morning. <laughs> here you go, my This is not as hard uh, doing this with the dads as it is with the moms, especially doing the oldest mom. That's not comfortable at all because, you know, you don't ask ladies how old they are. I will say this. According to our math, we were talking about this the other day. Come September, we will have at least three of our ladies that are over 90 years of age in our church. How about that? That's an amazing thing, isn't it? Amen. Youngest dad. Bobby, I know you a tad younger than I am. You 53? 54. You catching me, brother. All right. All right, we have 54. Anybody younger than... Who? Kenny? John? He's, uh -oh, you're not saying, you're just saying he's younger than you are. Kenny? Who? <laughs> 45. We're not saying John. <laughs> Kenny? All right. It is good to have y'all in our service this morning. Dad with the most family here this morning. Now, I've already surveyed the Kirby family, and uh, I have found that there is eight of them here this morning. That's praise the Lord, amen? Eight of their family. Can anybody beat eight? Anybody beat eight? Dwayne, how many of you have, Lance? Can't count that high? <laughs> Mr. LaDonna, how many of y'all got this morning? <laughs> All right. Lance, Dwayne's saying you get the prize this morning. Y'all want to arm wrestle for it? Y'all want to arm wrestle for it? Dwayne, you got eight, my brother. Could we get all of our dads to stand up for just a moment? All of our dads. Look around. These men representing the Lord Jesus Christ, not only in church, but with their family as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Brother Lauren. If 
I had grandchildren, you guys would be in trouble. I got four of my youngins here today. Four. Our, our next hymn this morning is found on page, I can see, there it is, 43. This is my father's world. Christian homes, God give us grace. 
Amen. June, what's the date? The 16th? June 16th, Father's Day, huh? You know, I was running around town June 14th. What day was that? What day was that? Boom! The flag day, yes, the old red, white, and blue. You see how we tend to forget? It was also another day, Robbie. The birthday of the United States Army. How does Lauren know all these things? Well, you know, it's been years since it's been, it's been drilled. Scripture is drilled in our head. We was talking this morning in the Sunday school class of the new church at Antioch in the book of Acts. How everything began. And Sunday and uh, Thursday night at the men's Bible thing there, we was talking about the food pantry, you know, feeding the the ones that didn't have food and all that. And I brought it to the point here, and I always remember this from uh, Martha Lynn here, with that shirt she used to have. Soul food, you remember that one? <laughs> and I made a mention of that, soul food. Vacation Bible School starting Monday. This one don't work? Okay, we're gonna go with the green one then. Army, all right. <laughs> so you know, I mentioned soul food. Vacation Bible School starting up. The men were saying, how can we participate more in the community? at our meeting. I said, hey, we got vacation Bible schools coming up. Even the host church that was hosting the steak dinner was doing vacation Bible school this week. That's how you can get involved. 
and like the beginning of the church of Antioch, Brother Eustace, two men at that dinner asked me, where is Clayland Baptist Church? I've never met these guys before because there's, there's quite a, there's different congregations. Where is your church at, Clayland Baptist Church? And I gave them directions and all that. I don't know if they're here today or not. Nope, I'm not seeing them. They didn't make it there. But recognition of today, Father's Day. Fathers, we have a responsibility. Make sure you got your Kleenex, all right? silent in prayer just an eyes rolled me when I had nightmares you can read quite a story in his callous lines years of work and worry had left their mark behind remember daddy's hands how they held my mom tight are things that I've forgotten that I love about that man but I always will remember the love in daddy's hand daddy's hand soft and kind when I was crying daddy's hand were hardest still when I done wrong daddy's hand but I come to understand there was always love in Daddy's hands. I remember Daddy's hands working till they bled, sacrificed unselfishly to keep us all fed. If I could do things over, I'd live my life again And never take for granted the love of Daddy's hands Daddy's hands were soft and kind when I was crying Daddy's hands were hard as steel when I went wrong Daddy's hands weren't always gentle, but I've come to understand there was always love in Daddy's hands. Daddy's hands were soft and kind when I was crying. Daddy's hands were hard as steel when I done wrong. Daddy's hands gentle, but I've come to understand, there were always love in Daddy's hands, Daddy's hands, listen to you, Dad. God is good. Amen. Also say that uh, Daddy's hands relate to that song quite well. How many of you was raised old school? <laughs> I thought as much. Uh, and praise God for it. Amen. I tell you what. My dad, uh, being a pastor um, and going through scripture, he found a passage in Proverbs that uh, he believed in. And I uh, don't recall the reference right offhand, but I will paraphrase it. 
the foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And I wish I could stop there. But the passage goes on to say, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. My daddy beat the fool out of me. Not abuse, but love. And I thank him for it. I also want to say thank you to Emily and Caroline and Sarah for uh, providing that breakfast for us this morning. Guys, that was awesome. That was very good. Thank you all very much. Um, and for those of you dads who uh, have not gotten a gift basket yet, uh, I think Miss Melinda's uh, got a few left up here on the front pew. Please get one before you head out. And uh, just, uh, just our appreciation for, for guys, dads, fathers, standing in the gap, doing what God has called you to do. Um, as you see on the screen, Father's Day... Um, we're talking about courage this morning, Joshua chapter 1. And uh, thinking about Father's Day and, and uh, kind of how to kick off this message, you know, I, I couldn't help but to think about Father's Day. What a great day it is, amen? I, I think Father's Day ought to be held up there uh, right next to Christmas and Easter, you know what I'm saying? I mean, for, for the, the, the one day that, that we get recognized for the other 364 days that, that we work tirelessly, and I mean work hard all year long. This is the one day, man, what a great day it is. The one day that we as fathers that, that we're doted on, the one day that we get to relax in, in our, and y'all know what I mean by this, in our chair, amen? And we get to relax in our chair, and that we get to have the TV remote all to ourselves. The one day that we get to watch what we want, the one day that we don't have to do the dishes or the laundry or, or clean the house. The one day that we are the focus of attention and the only day that we can do those things without a legitimate excuse. <laughs> Amen? The rest of the times, guys, y'all need to be in the house helping. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. Uh, last Sunday, we were talking about uh, building a spiritual house. And this Sunday, I wanted to follow up with, uh, with the courage that it takes in, in order to do that. My prayer this morning is simple. My prayer this morning is that for all of us here today, especially us dads, is to leave here with, with renewed courage. It has been said that courage is something that we all have right after we need it. <laughs> You understand what I mean? I mean, it, it, it's not hard, to, it's not hard to, to have courage when there's no threat. Amen? I mean, when the threat is there, we can think about all of these different things in our mind. And when the threat is over, boy, they better be glad they walked off. They better be glad. I was fixing the whatever. I mean, it's easy to have courage when the threat's over. But when the threat is right there in front of us, it's, it's much more difficult. So this morning I want to talk to you about how to have courage when the threat is very, very present. When the threat is right in front of us. So, so what is courage? Why do I, why do I need courage? How do I, how do I get courage? Well, I thought about that as well. And I said, you know what? Let, let, let's, Google has the answer to everything. Amen. I said, let's go to Google and let's, just, let's look it up and see what it has to say. Here's what I found out. Courage. The quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, without fear, bravery. Well, that's a pretty good definition. What else is courage? What else does, what, what else does uh, Google have to say about it? It says, courage, the heart as the source of emotion. That last one is very interesting as well, and that's the one that we're going to be looking at this morning. Courage. The ability to act in accordance with one's belief, especially in spite of criticism. Amen? Amen? It takes courage. Let me tell you something. It takes courage to be a Christian today. It takes courage to stand up. Why do I need courage? What is, what is this courage all about? Why do we need courage to stand up for what we know is godly, for what we know is right. 
especially in a world where we're standing up for those core ideas and standing up for those core beliefs, it's not popular. And it's not popular. We, we understand we can look around. I, I think we could all agree that we're living in a, in a day and age where, where Christianity is becoming, or being a Christian and living as a Christian, it is becoming very difficult. You might not see it so much here around Swanee County. Well, let me tell you something. There's places right here in America, you don't have to go very far to find it. There's places right here in America when you stand up for your Christian faith, for your Christian values, for what we've come to believe and hold sacred, you're going to come under verbal and sometimes physical attack. That's a sad thing to say in America, amen? We're living in a day where, where it sin, seems like a, a, a sin is just going unchecked and people are doing whatever that they think is right in their own mind. I want to show you a verse this morning. I'm going to make a few comments about it, and then we're going to move on. I, I told you to take your Bibles to Joshua. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's go to Judges for a minute. Let's go to Judges chapter 17. In Judges chapter 17, in verse number 6, we find this passage. It says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. It seems kind of like an odd verse, stuck in the middle of a chapter, but if you go back and you start reading the beginning of Judges chapter 17, you're going to find out that this passage is talking about a guy by the name of Micah. And it talks about uh, a deal with money between him and his mom. But anyway, it talks about uh, uh, him going to take this money and, and make a graven image or, or something, an idol, if you would, to worship. And basically what this passage is talking about is that there is uh, no king, meaning that there is no governing authority. There is nothing to keep people in check. People are doing what they want to do. There, there, was, I mean, there was corruption going on. There was uh, 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 immorality going on. I mean, all, all of these things were happening. Idolatry, all of these things were going on at one time. And I, and I thought about that, and, and, and I thought about what's going on in America today, and I read this verse, and it said, there is no king, there is no governing authority. And I thought, boy, doesn't that sound familiar? And I look around, and I see what's going on in our world today, and I don't know about you, but it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see a country going in the direction that it's going, and, 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 and us not standing up for what we need to be standing up for. Let me say it like this, guys, we need courage. We need courage to be able to, to stand in the gap. We need courage to, to love our spouse, to love our children the way that God has told us to love them. Heard this some years ago. Any man can father a child, but it takes courage to be a dad. Boy, there's a lot of truth to that not always popular to do what's right it's not always popular to do what's godly but we have we have got to have the courage to stand in the gap and do that why why do i need courage when we have to have a a marriage protection amendment in order to protect the definition that, that marriage is legal, legal union between one man and one wife. We need courage. And we could even go back and, and ask the question, where was, where was our courage when we took prayer out of schools? Where was our courage when we said that abortion was okay? Where was our courage when it was said that homosexuality is just, a, just an alternate, alternate lifestyle? Where was our courage then? We need to have our courage today. Again, now I invite you to take your Bibles, open up to Joshua chapter 1, and I want to bring you up to speed on what's going on. And get to Joshua chapter 1, get the book of Joshua. This passage is taking place right after uh, Moses has brought the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. They've gone through the wilderness. At this point, Moses has died. He's passed on, and Joshua has been commissioned by the Lord in order to to pick up the mantle and to move on from there. What we're going to look at this morning, uh, these words are, are coming from the mouth of God. They are, they are directly from God, directly to Joshua. If you have your Bibles again, chapter 1, let's look at the first two verses. I'm going to title this, The Feet of Courage. 
Notice what it says. It says, After the death of Moses, servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. In verse number 2, as you begin to look back over this passage, it says, Go over this Jordan. Taking and skip down to verse number 11, you're going to see there that it says, You will cross over this Jordan. <clears throat> what I see in both of these places is a command to go. It's not a, if you want to, if you'd like to, if you feel like it. If you have time, if you're not too busy this week, you might want to think about it. Now, in both of these places, the command is go. It's not for us to sit still. We're to have the courage to go. And if you read on down through this passage, you're going to realize that there's some obstacles standing in the way. And here's the thing of it is, is because Joshua, he could very easily say, well, Lord, I understand the command is to go, but I'm a, little, I'm a little hesitant about this. Are you aware that there's a river between us and the land that you're talking about? The Lord says, I'm aware. Well, Lord, oh, you know, we, we, we sent spies over there into that land, and, 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 and those Canaanites, man, there, there's pretty big people over there. The Lord said, I'm aware of that. Well, Lord, I don't, I don't know if you really noticed what you're talking about, and, and if you've really taken the good... Have you seen the walls of Jericho? Lord, those walls are pretty thick. Lord said, I'm aware of that. The point is, is there was obstacles in the way, and the Lord was aware of that, amen? But if the Lord tells us to go, let me tell you something, it's not for us to reason, but it's for us to respond. Can we say amen to that? And we've been told to go. It's not for us to reason, it's for us to get busy and do it. There's another place that I want to show you what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 in verse number 14. Paul said, I go. That's what he means when he said, I press toward. He said, I'm moving. I'm not reasoning about it. Man, if you go back and you look over the life of Paul, there were some times when, when you could have said, Paul, I'm not sure if I'd have done that. I, I, know, I know I mention this quite often, but, but I can't help it. I've got to keep coming back to it because it is such a beautiful thing in my mind. You remember the time when, <clears throat> when Paul had been in the city and he was preaching the gospel, and of course he was put in prison for it. That didn't help anything. They let him out. He went back to preaching the gospel. And they said, well, you know what? We're going to teach him a lesson, and we're going to kill him. And bless their heart, they tried. And they thought they had succeeded, and they thought they had stolen Paul. They thought they had killed him, and they threw him outside the city. But, uh, but he came back, too. And he got up, and he goes, I'm going back in there. And they said, Paul, I don't know if I'd you know, I don't know have done it. I don't know if I'd do that. He goes, no, 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 you don't understand. He said, we're not done. And he said, the Lord said, go. That's what he meant when he said, I pressed toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God. In Christ Jesus. Well, if we could grab a hold of that. If we could really understand that. Actually, you know that there's another place in Scripture that Jesus told us to go. You'll find it there at the last chapter and last couple of verses in Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. If you go over there, you're going to find what we call the Great Commission, and it tells us to go, it tells us to teach, it tells us to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say if you want to, if you feel like it, if you have time next week, it says go do it. That's what it tells us. But Lord, you don't understand, there's a river that stands between me and, 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 and them. There, there, there's this, there's, there's this, I can't cross that river. The Lord said go. Well, you don't understand that those people in, in town, those people where I work, those people, whatever the situation might be, uh, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't like me too much. It's not the point. The point is, is to go. Well, Lord, some of those walls are going to be hard to tear down. Some of those people are, are, are they claim to be atheists, and, and they don't want to have anything to do with you. They don't want to have anything to do with the name of, of Christ. They don't want to have anything to do with the shed blood of Jesus. They don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm not going to be able to tear those walls down. The Lord said, go. It's not up for us to reason. It's up to us to respond. The Lord knows what you're going to be facing, and he tells us to go. So we talk about the feet of courage and then the next thing I want to talk about is action of it 
it and it and feet and action the same thing we're kind of well, let's look at it in verse 7 and 8 only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do uh, to do according to all the law which moses my servant commanded you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go <coughs> this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but shall Meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it from then or for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Can we say amen to that? Courage without action is not worth a whole lot. In fact, if you look at uh, as, as, as some of the things that this chapter is, is telling us to do, notice what this passage is even telling us to do. Going back at the first two verses we looked at in conjunction with this, he says, go over. He says to be strong. What else is he telling us? He's telling us to, to have courage. He says, observe this. Do not depart from it. Meditate on it. Don't be afraid. And the list goes on. We're told over and over in this chapter to, to put our courage into action. These two verses talks about uh, the subject of this is, is the law of God, the law of Moses. We're told to know it. We're told to learn it. We're told not to turn away from it. Let me tell you something. The law of God is, is not to leave us, but it is to be a, 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 a integral part of who we are. We are to live it every single day. Not just on Sunday morning. <laughs> every day. Every Sunday. Every Sunday night. Every, every time we have church, we'll, we will to try our best to be here. Live the law of God. But the law of God, living that is just not for... When we have worship, is it? We ought to live the law of God in our homes. We ought to live the law of God in our workplace. <coughs> Isn't that what the command that God has given to Joshua? Observe it, do it. Meditate on it day and night. Don't let it depart from you. Hang on to it. Cherish it. That's what it's saying. Brother Lauren mentioned... Uh, Tuesday night or Thursday night steak dinner a little while ago. I want to come back to one of the things that I said that night. I, I've used this statistic before. Fifty years ago, Gallup poll said ninety something percent of America was Christian. It's a pretty high number, amen. Twenty-five years ago, that number was in the 70s. High 70s, but 70s. Last year, Gallup did the same poll. Numbers down to 68%. That's troubling. And it is troubling that we've gone from the 90 down to 68% in 50 years. But I still contended this. If 68% of Americans who claim to be Christian lived and acted like Christians, we'd live in a different America. Amen? Amen. Or oh me. You understand what I'm asking? If 68% of America lived according to what they claimed, we would live in a different America. What would it look like if Christians actually got serious about the Word of God? What would it look like? What would it look like if we took the Lord at His Word and we meditated on the Word of God, not just the law of Moses, but if we actually meditated on, on everything that Jesus had to tell us and, and put it into practice and actually did what we were told to do and followed the commands of God, what would America look like today? I guarantee you we would be a whole lot better off than what we are right now. Can we say amen to that? Number three, the face of courage. What, is the fa what does courage look like? <clears throat> Skip down to or go down to verse number nine. Have I not commanded you? What does he say? Be 
strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Words coming from God. They're directly from God, directly to, to Joshua. <coughs> Notice commands again. Be strong, have good courage, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. That word dismayed is a very interesting word. How many of you how many of you have a Bible translation other this is New King James. How many of you have something besides that? How many of your Bibles does use the let me let me do it like this. How many of your Bibles uses the word dismayed? Okay, a few of them. How many of you your Bibles use the word discouraged? All right. A few of them. And see dismayed and discouraged is the same thing, same word. And I find that interesting because he says at the top of the verse <coughs> he says, have good courage. Don't be discouraged. Amen? Do you see that? Have good courage. Be strong. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Why? Why, why shouldn't we be discouraged? It seems like sometimes that the, that the world is just absolutely falling in on top of us. And you're right, sometimes it is. Sometimes life is not a box of chocolates. Sometimes it gets left in the windshield on a hot summer day and it all melts. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't go our way, does it? Sometimes there's obstacles in our path. Sometimes there's a river. Sometimes it's the people that live there. Sometimes it's the walls. Don't be discouraged. Have courage. Go. Why does God give these commands to Joshua why does he give these commands to us simply put because I think God knows where we are God's already been there he's already done that and, and what does he say at the end of that verse I'm with you wherever you go that's why we ought to have courage we're not in this thing by ourselves amen and God's with us and we need to put that into our mind. We need to plant that in our mind. We have, been, have to have the mind of courage. Look at verse number 13. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord, is, the Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. It's yours. All you got to do is go get it. All you got to do is go get it. Anybody ever had a tree down in the yard and say free firewood? And technically it is. Just hasn't been processed yet. You get a phone call. Is it cut up? No. It's not cut and split? No. Would you cut it and split it for me? And still give it to you? Come on, man. You got to put some effort in this. It's given to you. Man, it's not a tree they had to cut down. They didn't have to cut it up. They didn't have to split it. All they had to do was go in there and take it. God had already given it to them. All they had to do was follow the commands of the Lord. And so that comes to our strength. Where does our strength come from? Our strength comes from God. I know we skipped over it a while ago. I want to come back to verse number 5 for just a second. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. We read that in verse number 9. Let's look at it again. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Man, that ought to give us some strength. Amen. That ought to give us the strength to put one foot in front of the other. Do you understand that peace and comfort is coming from the Lord? This comfort is given to Joshua so, <clears throat> so he'll have the strength to go and do what God is telling him to do. Sometimes the Lord might be asking us to do something. Sometimes we know what the right thing is is to do sometimes we know when when things are being said or done at work that that we know ought not to be going on we ought to have the courage to call it out but it's difficult sometimes and those are my co-workers i don't want them thinking i'm some kind of a jesus freak or something i don't, I don't want to think bad of me for what standing up and doing what's right 
doesn't make sense to me. I mean, let me just show you a couple of things this morning. From Scripture. Moses, he found the Lord was the giver of rest. Joseph, he experienced the Lord as the source of prosperity and forgiveness. We talked about Joseph a few, a few weeks ago. You remember that? Remember what he went through in <coughs> the first few, few, first few years of his life, man. They were great. And his brothers got kind of jealous, not kind of did, got jealous, and, and, man, they hated Joseph. Took his coat, sold him into slavery, covered the coat in blood, carried it back to his daddy. Signed a line or something got him. I don't know. Sold him into slavery. Wound up in Potiphar's house, wound up in prison, <laughs> then wound up second in command. How about that? And guess who showed up? My bros, my brothers. Joseph experienced the Lord as the source of prosperity and forgiveness. What about David? Well, David's life's a roller coaster, isn't it? David knew the Lord as the foundation of victory. Talked about Psalm 61 a couple of Sunday nights ago. David was in one of those one of those situations in life where he seemed like uh, God was a thousand miles away. In fact, David says, Lord, I'm crying to you from the ends of the earth. And then David says, but Lord, I know what you've done in my past. I know what you're doing today, and I know what you're going to do in the future. You are the foundation of my victory. <clears throat> talked about Paul a while ago. I <laughs> talked about another roller coaster. Paul enjoyed the peace of the Lord in every trial. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being a missionary today, going through what Paul went through? Good gracious. John. <clears throat> well, he discovered the Lord's companionship when he was in prison on the Isle of Patmos. John and the Lord, they had some had some real good conversations. We look at these in Scripture, but that's not the real question. The real question is, how do you know the Lord? That's the real question. Because let's be honest. Today, that's what really matters. It takes courage to stand up and do what we know to be right as Christians. Rest assured, when you have the courage to stand up for what is right through the eyes of God, what is righteous, what is holy, Satan's going to war against us. And that's okay. And that's okay. Why? Because God will be with us. God will never leave us. Just as much as God had already given the promised land to the children of Israel, there's a promised land that he's promised to us as well. It's just going to take a little courage to stand up for God and to get there. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for the day and the hour that you've given to us. Lord, for this opportunity to come into your house and to worship and to pray and to praise. Father, what a mighty God you are. Lord, my prayer this morning, not just for us dads sitting here in this congregation this morning, but my prayer is for all of the dads and moms, for all, for everyone that is, that is here this morning, that will that hear this message on YouTube or Facebook, that God will have the courage to stand in the gap and to always do what is right. To always do what is righteous and holy. Even if it's unpopular. Lord, give us the courage. In Jesus' name, amen.